It's no secret that Marvel likes to put clues to the future in their productions. Doctor Strange and Iron Man both hinted at the title for Endgame. One in Infinity War and one in Age of Ultron. So it should be no surprise to you that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would do the same thing. It is, after all, a Marvel production. And now that the show is over, I am going to do a seven-part miniseries of the things you may have missed in AOS Seasons. In the comments, leave some suggestions for things you may have missed in Season 2. And tell me if I missed anything. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to say spoilers ahead for the entire MCU and for all of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So click off now if you don't want those. Alright, everyone off who needs to be off? Good. Let's get in the video now. For this video, I will be covering about 10 or 11 different points I have in my notes. Yes, I wrote notes on my favorite show. It gave me video ideas for the next 14 weeks. Come on, just, just deal with it. Uh, anyway, the first note I, that I have is the map of the Kree Inhuman City that gave Daisy and Reyna their powers. And also killed, killed Trip, but we, we shouldn't talk about that. I mean, that, that was a sad moment. Um, but, uh, this map was in episode I Spy, which is season one, episode four. When Ward sneaks into the base on behalf of Akila Amador, uh, he comes across a room with information worth millions of dollars at least. The information was the writing of the GH325 formula caused patients to write. This, as we know, is the map of the Kree city where humans went through terogenesis and either became inhumans or died. I mean, Yeah. Uh, the important thing to note from this is that Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. knew where it was going from the beginning. Makes me love the show even more. Alright, so uh, for the second note that I have, I'm going to be talking about Agent Mac. No, not Director McKenzie. Agent Mac from that one season, one episode where he's driving the truck. This is, uh, this is the part where the truck gets flipped and he has to call for, help, for some help, and it's not a very important scene. I just thought it was interesting because some of the names were re reused. Yeah. Uh, which brings me on to the next thing, Agent Shaw. There is an Agent Saw Shaw in Season 1, obviously not Deke, but still an Agent Shaw. Coulson receives information from him earlier in the series, and he comes up uh, one more time and turn, turn, turn as one of Victoria Hand's people she trusts. She's, he's one of the few people she trusts. Uh, unfortunately, we do not get to see Agent Shaw again. The show's creators, creators leave us to theorize about what happened to him. Like, what if Shaw's son or grandson was Deke's dad? That would be pretty interesting. Too bad there's no ev evidence to support that. That would have been a great theory. Uh, the next thing you may or may not have not noticed was how the name Scorch came back to the show. In Season 1, Episode 5, The Girl in the Flower Dress, Chen Ho Yin... Uh, came up with the name Scorch before dying in that same episode. Later, in Season 3, when one of the Inhumans was trying to give himself a superhero name, he thought of Scorch and quickly shot it down. I don't remember the exact quote, but he said something along the lines of, that's a terrible name. Uh, really goes to show that the AOS writers give fans their daily dose of Easter eggs. And, and inside jokes. Anyway, uh, this next one is a little different. I think this is kind of a theory, along the lines of a theory-ish. So I think that May being able to hold the staff in Episode 8 is a hint to her powers in Season 7. The staff is fueled by rage, and that is, that is an emotion. I think, I think we can all agree that rage is an emotion. Uh, that doesn't physically affect May in any way. She, she's not angry. She, always, she deals with, with it every day. So, yeah. Um, then, five to seven years later, because the timeline's a, a bit different uh, from Seasons 5 through 7, uh, she gains the ability to read people's emotions by being in close proximity with someone. She probably wouldn't be feeling anything in 2020, am I right? But I'm just... The next little Easter egg comes in the form of a gas station. In Season 1, Episode 9, entitled Repairs, we get to see a gas station getting attacked by an unknown force. At the time, the main suspect was Hannah Hutchins, as she was in a similar accident with a particle accelerator. However, it is the gas station we, that we are concerned about right now, not the characters. So, that gas station was actually a Roxxon gas station. 
And for those of you who don't know, Roxxon is the company that links all of the non-Netflix MCU TV shows. It's in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Cloak and Dagger, Runaways, and even Agent Carter. It is the glue of the Marvel TV universe. Kind of like director Deke Sha- I mean Nick Fury in the main MCU. But, but seriously, I, I want I kind of want a spinoff of Deke, about Deke's timeline. That, that would be awesome. Just imagine Deke with an eye patch that he doesn't need. Uh, that would just go perfectly with the bandana. Just, just imagine the... Yeah, maybe I'll have an edited picture of that right now. But anyway, uh, the next thing... Right, that I have is about Agent Davis. I think I saw him talking to Fitzsimmons at that particle accelerator I mentioned earlier. It's kind of hard to tell because he had sunglasses on, so correct me if I'm wrong about that in the comments. I think I saw Davis in uh, in repairs, but I'm not sure. It was it, Just correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, okay. Aha. The communication watch. Coulson had one on the bus in season one. It was a very small scene, but it came up again in the 50s. In the original timeline, the watch was invented in the 30s, but in season 7, they didn't make the prototype till at least 1953, as the Area 51 shield base opened then. Uh, but it was still cool to see a uh, callback to the communication watch called Nintendo. And actually, when I first saw that scene, here's a little fun fact, I actually thought it was, an app- it was supposed to be like a play on the Apple Watch, but apparently it's the communication watch that Colson had in his bus. That was, that was pretty cool. Alright, uh, so this next one is from Season 1, Episode 14 and 15, entitled Tahiti and Yes Men. Lorelai gets a ride with the newlywed Mr. McKenzie. Y- you see where I'm going here? Mr. McKenzie? Director McKenzie? Man, this, this video has a lot of names similar to those in more recent seasons. I think they're real lazy on the writing's part, or very intelligent. Maybe they wanted to hit at some character's family. Or family tree or something. Yeah, that was what they were going for. It was a pretty interesting way to do this, in my opinion. Um, we all love... Okay, so here's the next part. We all love lie detector scenes in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Especially the what's in the box question. So, in the comments, answer this question. Because I, now I want to know. The question is, in case you don't remember or you've never seen the show, which you probably shouldn't be watching this if you've never seen the show, um, you wash up on a deserted island alone with nothing but a box. What is in that box? My answer would probably be food, water, and a way to talk to the outside world, i.e. my phone. Uh, Answer that that in comments. I kind of want to know now. That's a really fun question. Um, I'm sorry, the dog's barking in the background. Um, anyway, the question that I was going to focus on was, have you ever heard of Project Insight? Eric Koenig asks all the original team, plus Trip, that question. Insight, as uh, you probably know, is a big player in the main MCU, as it is what led to Hydra revealing themselves to be in S.H.I.E.L.D. during the events of 2014's Captain America, The Winter Soldier. It also plays out 40 years early in the timeline created by Season 7's Time Hopping Adventures. This is why there's a rocket on the poster, in case you didn't know. I thought it was a moon landing, uh, but no, no. Instead, it was was just inside launching in the 70s. You know, just just casually having a a world-ending event just 40 years before it's supposed to happen. Makes sense, doesn't it? Exactly. Alright, and now for the final thing. I, sorry, this is a pretty short video, but now for the final thing. This is from the Season 1 finale, and it is also said by Nick Fury. The quote is along the lines of alien invasion from the from another universe. Here he seems to have been ta- he seemed to be, have been talking about the Shatari invasion from a year before. But this seems to fit more accurately with the plot of Avengers Endgame. This came out six years before the movie came out. Uh, Nick Fury gave us a hint to, of the end of the Infinity Saga, which is actually, I feel like that's pretty cool. It's like, hey, fans, you know what? Thanos coming back after he wins, he's going to come back from another universe, and uh, he, he's going to try to kill you. Cool? He's going to try to kill the other half of you. Cool? Cool. That, that's what he did. That, that's what Nick Fury said. That, that's exactly what he said, definitely. All right, and that concludes my list of a few things that you may have missed in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. Which one was your favorite? Did I miss anything? What are some What are some example some suggestions for season two season two video? Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. 
All right, so that was a fun video. Uh, no, seriously, that was really fun. Um, yeah, so, okay, so it's a little bit short, but it's, it was pretty fun. Uh, okay, here we go. So uh, you can watch another video by clicking the top left, top right, and bottom left corner of the screen. But before you do that, please click the bottom right corner of the screen to subscribe and like the video and comment and just everything. Just do everything. And uh, ring the bell. Just do every. Click all the buttons except the dislike button. That, that's that's my only request. All right. Uh, I guess. Bye.